This morning I'm not going to uh, go ahead with the sermon that I had planned. I'm going to go in a little bit different direction. Uh, and the reason for that is, is because we don't have a lot of fathers here. They're fathers of young, young children. So uh, we're going to go in a little bit different direction. So <laughs> this morning what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a father's discipline. But we're going to talk about our father God's discipline for us. So if you would... Uh, you, it, this scripture is in your outline, so if you would please stand uh, as we read the scripture. We're going to be reading uh, Hebrews chapter seven or chapter twelve, verses seven through eleven. In your hardship is discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline. Discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we all have human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits in our lives? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. You may be seated. You know, as we look at this passage and we think about how our human power is raised, I don't know very many children that are adults today, at least children that are adults my age, who are disciplined. Part of the problem, actually, the big part of the problem in our country today is the fact that parents are not disciplining their children. When, some, when a child does something wrong, it's somebody else's fault. That's just, it seems to be the norm in our society today. If back, back when I was growing up, if I got a bad grade, it was my fault. And boy, let me tell you, my dad let me know that it was my fault. Today, if a child makes a bad grade, parents blame the teacher. Well, you didn't teach them right, or you didn't spend enough one-on-one -on -one time with them, or you're giving them too much homework. But we need to get back to where the parents are blaming the children when the children do something wrong. And it's the same way with how God works with us. When we do something wrong, the Bible tells us that there's consequences for our actions. On Judgment Day, when we stand before Christ and we're going to give an account for everything that we've done, well, the devil made me do it. Is it going to work? Well, it was my mom and dad's fault. That's not going to work. Well, my little brother made me do it. This, it's not going to work when we stand before our Savior on Judgment Day. So part of what God does in our lives today is He disciplines us. Because, let's face it, we all make mistakes. None of us are perfect. There's been one perfect person that's walked the face of this earth, and that was the Son of God, Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. But even though He was a perfect person, He was also an obedient child. He was obedient to His Father. Out of His obedience, He became the perfect sacrifice for our sins. There was a moment in time where He had all of the Perfect, sinless man had all of the sins that had ever been committed or ever would be committed on his shoulders. There was a moment in time where his father had to take his eyes off of him. Because God can only be around holiness at that moment in time because of us, because of you, because of me, because of from Adam and Eve to the Christ comes back and we have the final judgment day. 
Man has committed sins. Somebody had to pay the price. Christ, out of obedience, accepted that responsibility. He took our sins on His shoulders. God, the ultimate punishment for what we deserve. The Bible tells us what we deserve is death. The Bible in Romans tells us, in the book of Romans, tells us that the wages of sin is death. So what do we deserve for our sins? What do we deserve for doing stuff wrong against God? We deserve death. But because Jesus was obedient as a child, He took that upon His shoulders. So the ultimate punishment for what we've done wrong, the ultimate discipline has already been taken care of. But at the same time in our lives, it's not easy to live the life of a Christian. Even though we know that the ultimate price has been paid, we still make mistakes. We still sin. We still fall short. We all fall short. But because, and because of that, God still has to discipline us in our lives. What we read here in, in, in Hebrews chapter 12 is one of my favorite scriptures. Endure hardship as discipline. As I said, living, living life, period, isn't easy. But living a Christian life is much more difficult. A lot of the things that we face through persecution, you know, we don't have persecution in America as bad as countries in the Middle East have persecution of Christians. But at the same time, we do face persecution. We face difficult times. During these difficult times, during these hardships, we need to endure it because God is trying to teach us something. God is trying to discipline us. Now, I remember a lot of times growing up, I got disciplined. But... Every, after we moved to Arkansas in 1986, I had two cousins that would come and they would visit and they would stay with us every summer. Uh, sometimes both of them were there the whole summer. And they were brothers. Um, sometimes both of them were there the whole summer. Sometimes one of them would come half the summer and the other one would come the other half the summer. Uh, one was six months older than I am and one was a year and a half younger than I am. They were exactly two years apart to the day. Okay. And i got to tell you, they were raised in a different environment than I was raised in. They weren't raised in church. I, how many of y'all had a drug problem growing up? And by that, I mean that every time the church doors were open, mom and dad drug you to church. <laughs> That's the kind of drug problem. Well, I had that problem. Unfortunately, my cousins didn't have that problem. If they went to church, it was in the summertime when they stayed with us, and my parents drugged them to church. And, and literally, sometimes it was literally dragging them to church. But since they were raised in a different environment than what I was raised in, they didn't have the discipline that I had. Well, because I was there, and because I didn't either didn't tell on them, or just didn't say anything at all, and let them do whatever it was that they were doing, I got punished as well. Sometimes my punishment wasn't as severe. And sometimes my dad just didn't ask any questions. He didn't ask who done it. He just said, okay, you were all there. Guess what? Y'all get the same thing. Well, sometimes that's how God is with us. Sometimes our entire family goes through a hard time, a, hard, a hardship, a trial, a tribulation that our whole family goes through. Now, is it because of something that we did wrong? It, it could be, but it's most likely not. It's just part of how God molds us and makes us into who He wants us to be. The reason that parents, that are earthly, that the Bible tells us that our earthly fathers discipline us so we know right from wrong. We know when to do what's right. Because they mold, as, as we're growing, 
our parents mold us and make us through their discipline and their love and their encouragement, God has to do the same thing. Sometimes, now, I heard somebody say this week, and this, this fits perfectly along with it. Sometimes we just see today, maybe tomorrow. But God sees what's down the road. God sees next year. God sees two years from now, five years, ten years from now. Well, during between now and then, He's got to prepare us for whatever it is that He has planned for us. Well, sometimes we have to go through a hardship. Sometimes we have to go through a discipline for God to prepare us for that. Sometimes our whole family has to go through a discipline to prepare us for that. Another example, when I first decided that I was going to accept God's call to become a minister, I had a, I had a good job. I was working for Target. I was working my way up the ladder again. I had been there before and left to take a, a higher position at another place. And when they closed, I went back to Target. Basically, they started me back out of the bottle. But I was working my way back up. And I was almost on the fast track to upper management. But for years, I've been feeling God calling me to become, to go into the ministry. When I accepted that call, I ran into a bump in the road with Target. There were certain times that I needed off for school that just happened to be major holidays. Um, one of the weekend, basically the weekend that kind of was the straw that broke the camel back was the uh, no tax weekend when you know parents can come and shop for school supplies and clothes and they don't have to pay state income tax. Well, that was one of the weekends that I needed off for school. Well, me and the store manager kind of butted heads. Anyway, I ended up leaving a good job to spend time in my studies, you know, so I could give the proper focus to my studies that, that God deserved. Because he didn't, when he called me to be a minister and sent me to school to become a minister, he didn't expect me to, do, to go halfway. Read, read half the chapter. Read just this book in the Bible. He wanted me to read the whole thing and then pro properly prepare for my classes. But because of that, I had to leave my job. In the process of that, our family went through a financial hard time. And I mean a hard time. I mean, we were, have you ever heard the phrase, robbing Peter to pay Paul? We, were, we did that for about a year. And it was getting really, really hard on me. But that was a hard time. That was a discipline that I had to endure. That my whole family had to endure. For God to prepare us for what we were going into. There's two careers that you get in if you're not concerned about money. Number one is a teacher. Number two is a preacher. So if you don't want to make money, choose one of those two careers. If you're thinking about going back to school and switching careers, there you go. If you don't want to earn money, if you never want to have any dream of paying off any student loan debt, go into one of those two careers. But God will prepare you through hardship and discipline for what he has in store for you down the road. The passage that we read in Hebrews chapter 12 says that it's not pleasant. I know when my dad was using the switch or the belt or the hanger or his hand or whatever was convenient, it was not fun. If you ever got spanked as a child, did you? How many of you enjoyed it? If you enjoyed it, raise your hand. Raise both hands if you enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. Well, you and Dave are supposed to have your hands up. Your mom's best is right there. <laughs> but it wasn't fun. Man, being disciplined was not fun. But when we become adults and we have children of our own, 
how much more do we respect what our fathers and our mothers did for us through disciplining us? That's why the world is in such chaos today. We're here to celebrate Father's Day. But there's so many children out there today that don't know their father. There's so many children in our country today that are being raised by their grandparents. Thank God for loving grandparents. I was raised by my grandparents. I, call, I knew them as mom and dad because they had raised me from the time I was five months old until I was in college. And to be honest with you, even though they've been gone since 2003, they're still raising me today. There are still times that when I'm dealing with bad grades or I'm dealing with something with, with Cameron or our family that I'll just reflect on what my parents said or what they did when they faced that same situation. So when we look at discipline, when we look at discipline from our parents, no, it's not fun. No, we don't enjoy it. But it is to mold us and to make us into productive adults. <clears throat> the reason that children today are growing up and not being productive adults is because parents aren't disciplining them. Well, it goes the same way with a Christian. If you're a blood-bought believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God never does any kind of discipline or you don't ever face any kind of hardships, and you live the easy road, you need to ask yourself why. There's an old saying that says, if the devil's not attacking you, you're not doing anything. So if, you, if, 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 and when we go back and we look at the book of Job and all the stuff that Job went through that God allowed Satan to put him through, it wasn't because of anything that Job had done. It was to make Job into something. It was to mold him into what he would become. God does the same thing with us. If He doesn't allow us to go through hard times, trials, tribulations, temptations, discipline, we're going to be, unproduct we're going to be unproductive members of the church. We're going to be unproductive fathers in our families. We're going to be unproductive grandfathers in the lives of our grandchildren. God will mold us and make us and discipline us into what He needs for us to be, into what He desires for us to be. If God calls you to do something, He'll give you the ability to do it. If God calls you to be a father, a grandfather, a mother, a grandmother, He'll give you the ability to do it. 25 years of age, 13, almost 14 years ago, I was nowhere near ready to be a father. I was still a child myself. I was still, I was still undergoing mom and dad's discipline, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, I had moved out, I was living on my own, and there were times when I called and said, I can't pay bill. I got tough. Do you need it? Well, no. Well, then tough. If my lights were about to be turned off, that would get paid. Your know, mom and dad would help me out with that. But I went through discipline, even as an adult. So when I had a child, I was nowhere near prepared. Now, when Ray came along a few months ago, to be honest with you, 37 years of age, I was not prepared. <laughs> I was not prepared because it had been so long. But when God calls us to do something, He'll give us the ability to do it, whatever it is. But it's going to take discipline. It's going to take hardship. It's going to take times that are not so enjoyable for God to get us to where He needs us to be. We respect our fathers, our earthly fathers, for their discipline. This passage that we read said, How much more 
Should we respect our Heavenly Father for the discipline He gives us? Discipline from God is not fun. We think discipline from our earthly father is not fun. Discipline from God is not fun. Sometimes he'll let us hit rock bottom just so that we can see that he is the rock at the bottom. Just so that we get to the point to where we stop relying on ourselves that we reach out to him. That is difficult discipline to go through. Going, going to the point to where you actually hit rock bottom. That is tough discipline to go through. Sometimes God has to let us go there for us to realize that He is our Heavenly Father. That He cares about us. He loves us. And He's there for us. He's there to pick us up when we stumble. Unfortunately, some of us in our human nature are so quick and so apt till we fall down we want to put our hands out to brace ourselves. We don't want to reach up. Kind of like Peter when Peter was walking on the water and he endured hardship. The wind came, the rains came, the waves came. He took his eyes off Jesus and he started to sink. But because Jesus loved him Jesus allowed him to sink. Jesus allowed him that discipline before he reached out his hand and pulled him up. Because he loves us, he's going to allow us to endure hard times. He's going to allow us to endure discipline. We need to thank him for that. We need to thank God for just, not just the blessings that he gives us. And he blesses us each and every day that we wake up and get out of bed. We need to thank Him not only for that, but we need to thank Him for the hard times, for the discipline that we endure. Because He is molding us and making us into productive members of His church. And if you're not a productive member of His church, and the Bible says, what we just read says, that we're not true children of God in the first place. Don't shoot me. You read it right there. It says, if you don't undergo discipline from the Heavenly Father, you're an illegitimate child and not a true son of God to begin with. So if you're not going through something, if you haven't endured a rough spot in your life, you need to examine your relationship with Jesus Christ this morning. There were times in my life with my father when I didn't get in trouble. Imagine that. The older I got, the more I learned what discipline was. The more I respected his discipline. The more I obeyed what he told me to do. The older we get as Christians, the more mature we get as Christians, the more we need to thank God for His discipline, but the more we need to obey His Word. If you're not in the Word of God, if you're not studying the Word of God, then you're not even going to understand the concept of godly discipline. We see godly discipline from Genesis to Revelation. The first discipline of God was when He kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden for disobedience. All they did was eat an apple. But it was an apple that their father told them not to eat. So they had to be disciplined. That last judgment day that I talked about earlier when we all stand before Christ, we all give an account for what we've done in our lives. For those that haven't accepted Christ as their Savior, there's the ultimate discipline of eternal life in hell, separated from our Heavenly Father. For those that haven't accepted Christ, there's the other side of the coin. 
Because Christ paid the price for our discipline, we can enjoy eternal life in heaven in the presence of our Father and our Savior. But the choice is ours. When we get to heaven, like I said, the devil made me do it. Is it going to cut it? Mom and Dad made me do it. Is it going to cut it? There's going to be no excuses when we stand before Christ. The choice is ours. What choice do you make this morning? Are you willing to endure the discipline from your Heavenly Father? Or are you willing to pay the price for your sins? Jesus paid the price. All you have to do is accept His gift. What He did for us on the cross. All you have to do is thank Him and accept Him as your Savior today. And you won't have to pay the ultimate discipline. You won't have to suffer the ultimate discipline from God. The choice is here this morning. What choice do you make? This morning, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, don't wait any longer. If you need prayer for anything, I want to give you the opportunity this morning to come, led at the foot of the cross as we sing our song of invitation. Come forward.